This is the last section in the exponentials and logarithms chapter, and uh, this is on logarithms and non-linear data. Now, there are all sorts of relationships between things which are non-linear, things that have exponential growth. So maybe the number of people catching a virus might be uh, non-linear. The number of bacteria growing in a bowl might be non-linear, exponential type things. So they're the types of things where we might see uh, a graph that shoots up like this. Yeah, non-linear and exponential type graph. Or we may have things that have some sort of uh, exponential uh, decay. So things like uh, uh, radioactive decay. And a thing with like uh, maybe like a radioactive decay is it occurs over a long period of time. So let's say that this first graph here represented sort of bacteria. OK, now I'm not going to have uh, a big scale along my x axis because this might be um, sort of hours, one hour, two hours, three hours and something like that. But the growth in bacteria might be huge. So this might be starting off with 100 and by the time I get up to here there might be a million yeah um, and that's going to be pretty tricky to try and plot and try and spot any 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 patterns because any you know slight um, incorrect plotting or anything like that is going to make a big difference so what we're trying to do here is like we've got like a, a huge amount of numbers there 999,900 basically between that little scale and uh, on the second graph here, if we're talking about um, uh, radioactive decay then actually then the decay may may take maybe sort of quite uh, you know going from a very big number and you know, 10 to the power of 8 down to a very small number and this may be uh, a very big scale here so this might be thousands of years 1000 years yeah 2000 years so it may be that we've got big big scales here now to help overcome this problem we have things called log scales this is a special type of graph paper where it doesn't go up in a linear amount it goes up by a, a log amount so if we have a look at the first grid here what we've got is a scale where you, you plot 1 to 10 in the first bit and then 10 to 100, then 100 to 1,000. Yeah, this is a log scale. It doesn't go up. It goes 10, then 100, then 1,000. The advantage with this is that you can plot really small numbers accurately and you can plot huge numbers accurately. You haven't got like a little tiny bit down here where you're trying to fit in, you know, very big numbers. It's all nicely spread out. The same on this type of scale here. Yeah. And these might be powers of uh, of tens here. So we will go up to naught to ten, and then that might be a hundred, and then a thousand here, and then we've got the same on the y-axis. Now what happens is when we plot things on these log scales, then uh, graphs which were curved become straight lines. They become straight lines, and when things become straight lines we can use y equals mx plus c. Yeah, and when we've got y equals mx plus c, it makes it really easy to work out the gradient, look for patterns, find the value of c. We can be uh, do calculations on a linear graph rather than an exponential graph. So this is the whole point of this, to take things which go up in a huge value on a scale and to put it on a log scale. Now, there are two different uh, types we're looking for. So the first type is where we have um, an equation of this format. Y equals AX to the N. So notice where X is here. It's not power or anything like that. Yeah. And what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the log of both sides. So if I do the log of both sides, and I'm talking about log to the base 10, so I'm just going to write log. So log Y equals log a x n now um, we know that what we can do is when we have two things multiplied together you can add them so that's the same as log a plus 
log x to the n and then the n can go to the front so we have log y equals log a plus n log x now this is a bit like y equals mx plus c y equals um, m x plus c where log y it matches with y log a matches with c log x matches with x and n matches with uh, m now if i match that up to a graph which we've got at the top then you can see that on where x is on the x-axis what do we have log x on the y-axis what do we have log y what's the intercept well the intercept is log a okay and you can see it there the only thing that's missing is the gradient so this line will have a gradient of n okay so let's put that in so i'll put this here the gradient of this here is going to be n so we have this exponential um, function that we started with here we just applied the rules of logs and we ended up with this okay and things which fit this model nicely will plot to pretty much straight lines so what we've got here is a table of the populations of different towns in the uk which are listed at the top and they're ranked um london has been excluded because it's an outlier it's got its population is huge um so it you know it's it's an out but the others if we actually work out the uh, log of the rank as log to base 10 r and the log of the population log p then actually when we work out those values and put them in a table and draw a graph we see a graph here that has a pretty strong linear relationship okay so part so a and b are done here for us and you'll notice that the y-axis is log p let's choose a different color y-axis is log p and the x-axis is log r and we've got like a an intercept here and it says use your graph to estimate the values of a and n to two significant figures so what we do is um the relationship is this r equals r equals a p to the power n what we're going to do is do the log of both sides we've got log r equals log a p to the n now the this is part c the log a and uh the log p can cancel out and then the n goes to the front as a power so this is like this y equals mx plus c okay so this is how it matches up so log a is the intercept now the intercept i can see is 6.2 so log a log a equals 6.2 that's the intercept okay that's this one here so then i can work out a because this is log to the base 10 so 10 to the power <coughs> 6.2 is what a is and i could probably leave it like that because it's going to be like a million and, and something and then um, i can use the gradient to work out um, what the um, the value of n is because n is just equal to the gradient so i don't need to do anything to that so n equals gradient so to work out a gradient i've got a couple of points here um, i can see that it goes from this point to this point here going up and going across it goes from here to here so we'll try and work out roughly what they are so the rise looks like it's from about um, let's just get like a little pen here little pointer so it looks like it's going up from each square i think it's worth uh, 0 
2 or 2 squares is 0 0.1 something like that so this would be something like 5.7 that would be 5.7 no 5.65 at the bottom up to 6.18 okay it's going to be sort of very rough we're not going to be able to get it exactly now because these values are so difficult to read off I'm just going to go with the values that are in the book so this is 0 0.48 here as a a drop and going across it's uh, 0 0.72 so they're the values that they've got so the gradient is going to be uh, negative 0 0.48 divided by 0.72 so we'll grab our calculator and work that out um, a bit unreasonable to be expected to read off these values so um, easily so negative 0.48 divided by 0.72 um, so that gives us actually an exact value of negative two thirds that's handy okay as the the gradient for our value of n so we have a and we have n okay so I'll just highlight them here there's our n here's our a so if we wanted to write the full equation we've answered the question but um, going back to this r equals a to the p to the power n that would be r equals this is our a 10 to the power 6.2 times by uh, p <clears throat> to the power negative two thirds so there we would have the, the the full equation if we needed it now the second type is where you have an equation of this form y equals a times b to the power x so notice this time x is the power so we do the same as what we did before we do the log of both sides okay now the logs on the right hand side get split up so log a plus log b to the x because we've got a product then lastly what we can do is we can uh, bring the x to the front and we get this now again we can match it up with y equals m x plus c so log y is like our y log a is our intercept x is our x and the gradient is log b so you can see um, uh, a layout of that at the top notice that this time the x-axis is just labeled with x the y-axis is log y so you can see how they match up the intercept is log a and you can see the only thing that's missing is the gradient and the gradient here is going to be log b so log b all to the base 10 is the um, gradient so here we have a graph that represents the population growth of bacteria p over t hours the graph has a gradient of 0 0.6 let's put that on 0 0.6 is our gradient this is more like what you get in the exam rather than reading off those graphs. Um, and meets the vertical axis at 0, 2, so my intercept is 2. Scientists suggest that this growth can be modelled by the equation p equals a p to the power t, where a and b are constants to be found. Write down an equation for the line. So even if we couldn't remember what form that's meant to be, p equals a p to the power t, we would just do the log of both sides, log of p equals log a b to the power t. Then you'd split the logs up, log p equals log a plus log b to the power t. And then you'd bring the t to the front. So you got log p equals log a plus t log b. And then we can see our y equals mx plus c okay a bit twisted up it's not a problem so the equation of that line 
is going to be uh, log p. Okay, so that just stays as it is, log p. Then log a is the intercept, which is 2. And then we've got t log b. Log b is the gradient, so it's 0.6t. Notice the t and the log p stay, chain, stay because that's what's on the axis. That's normally where your x and y would be. So it's a bit like y equals mx plus c. Okay, part b, using your equation or otherwise. Like, yeah, we use our answer to part a, not otherwise. Find the values of a and b, give them to three significant figures where necessary. So there we go, three significant figures. Okay, right, so log a is equal to 2, isn't it? That's the gradient. Sorry, that's the intercept. Log a, which is the uh, intercept, is 2. So that means that 10 squared is a, which means that a is 100. So it's nice and easy for that bit. Um, then the next bit is um, the gradient is log b. So log b is equal to the gradient, which is 0 0.6. So that means 10 to the power of 0 0.6 equals b. Now, what's that to three significant figures? So we can do log to the base 10. Uh, sorry, no, just 10 to the power of 0 0.6. And to three significant figures, that's going to be 3.983. Okay, so there's the values of a and b, part c. Interpret the, the value of the constant a in this model. Now, the constant a came from the 2, didn't it? And that 2 is the value you get when t is equal to 0. t is equal to 0. Um, that's what log a is. So a actually... It stands for exactly the same thing. It's the it's the value of p when t is zero. Okay, so um, it's the value of p, which is the population. It's the population of the bacteria when t equals zero. So that's basically at the start. Yeah. Right, you should now be able to do exercise uh, 14H on pages 331 to 333. So just a reminder of the uh, two types of um, cases we can get with this equation. So number one is y equals ax to the n. Now if we do logs to both sides, we'll get log y equals um, n log x plus log a log a okay so here's your y um here's your intercept c here's your mx y equals mx plus c okay and then the other uh, type uh is when we've got y equals a b to the x yeah now the way that you tell the difference between the two is basically what you've got on your y-axis if what you've got on your y-axis is this value here now that might be t or a different letter then it's the first one okay so whatever letter you've got on your axis here yeah if whatever you've got on the axis is a power here okay then it's going to be the the second type that's the key to the two and you normally need to work out the values of a and b so yeah on the second one here uh, just like the previous one we do the log of both sides split things up put a power at the front and we'll end up with um, log y equals log a plus um, x log b and we'll have our y equals m x plus c and you can see where these things match up. And remember, when you just see log like that, we're thinking log to the base 10. So then we can work backwards and do 10 to the power of whatever to work out our values of A or B.